Hello, this is Cuckoo, and I'm at Super Booth. Uh, I, I'm getting scared to say the the year because sometimes I mess up. I say like, oh, it's Super Booth 2018, and it's 2019, 19, year, sure. 19, yeah. And this is Casper, the friendly Peter Edwards. Hello, how you doing? And he's working with Bastel Instruments which is uh, super cool. I was so happy when you moved to Bastel, actually. I was happy when I moved to Bastel, too. Yeah. It's been a really awesome time uh, working with the team, working with Vaclav, and we've been sort of overlapping more and more in, like, we're keeping our own ideas, but we're really influencing each other and starting to collaborate a lot more, and it's, it's just great. It's well, that's super cool. I, I've been keeping an eye on the stuff that you're working on now. Some have been announced, and some is out and some is just brand new today i guess yeah yeah i brought i brought a couple things that i haven't been talking about that i've been thinking about for a long time and then the push of super booth to just got me to finally finish it yeah. but there's just like an endless list of projects that are sort of ongoing or put aside for three years and then revisited um are you um what are they called again that uh mixer and the feedback stuff um are both of them out the party uh, makes the the feedback dark matter. I was showing a prototype last year, and we've been selling this for a couple months now, and it's doing really well. Um, and the mixer, we've got a new prototype, and we're just working on the firmware. Yeah. But I brought a secret little uh, thing in the back there of the new design. Um, you, I'm not sure how much you're ready to uh, reveal, but you made some sub a substantial addition underneath the hood. I made really substantial additions. We completely ripped out the uh, the guts and we put in an ARM processor and it's doing, um, uh, we're t I, I kind of want to make it like a mixer with artificial intelligence, like the world's first yeah. AI mixer, but that might be a bit grandiose. Yeah. We'll, we'll see. Yeah. But basically it's got um, a bunch of little tricks. So, you know, fade buttons so you can bring levels in and out over time, built-in compressor. So things that listen to your signals and then do stuff, like what the things that you might want it to do. But the thing I really like, and I, I don't want to talk about it too much, but is there's the Z output. And that's basically, that's the mixer is the center of your system. This is where all your most important signals go. So yeah. it seems to me like you should grab something from that. You know, the, yeah. it should process that in some intelligent way, clever way, and give you something. So yeah. I like the idea that it would listen and then be like, here is a melody to go with your beat. And then it just gives you, or an envelope follower, for yeah. instance. Yeah. And then that goes into something which maybe also ends up in the mix. And then that is getting and processed. You get the yeah. feedback, yeah. Like AI feedback. Exactly, yeah, yeah, intelligent feedback. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But uh, uh, cool, you know, cool. This, is, this is in the works, and uh, we're going to let it def design itself a little bit too, yeah. you know, as you spend time. With but that's like a massive und uh, undertaking to, to add a, an ARM processor and start programming it in a totally different way, I guess. Right, and while maintaining its like core, uh, you know, robust functionality as a mixer that is clean and sounds good and the VCAs are well behaved. Um, Are you used to that kind of uh, CPU programming? I'm not at all. No. Nope. <laughs> it's uh, like it's a, a frontier for me. Yeah, an adventure for you too. Um, and you know, this is again part of this uh, spirit of collaborating, joining a bigger team, yeah. working with other with other people, and getting into Euro rack in general, which I didn't do before. Yeah. I was, you know, much more circuit bending DIY, and uh, yeah, expanding the uh, the techniques and the applications. It's uh, so, you know, trying new things. Yeah. But, and that, the cir circuit bending uh, mindset it comes to life perhaps in, in the stuff that I see here and here. Yeah. Could you what so, is it? So, I'm basically this year, uh, you know, you just talked to Vaclav, and I think what he was saying too is we're kind of going back to what we love and really trying to return to that as a core, you know, what drives us to be doing this stuff and what do we want to share with the people here and out there. Um, and, you know, we love making music and we love making synthesizers. I love working with electronics. I'm not an electrical engineer, uh, you know, by education. I've gotten to a state that I'm really happy with it, but, uh, but this is just something I find really fun. Um, and I want to share that fun with people. And I think that the, the problem in a way is that this medium, the medium of electronics has been presented with a language that a lot of people aren't fluent in. Um, and if you don't speak 
this language, then it's just not available to you. So it's really perceived as something that's inaccessible or kind of boring or just too complex for you. Yeah. So this is like a playground. This is made by a dude who's not into math and physics who wants to have fun with circuitry. So, uh, you know, it started with the OhmSynth Mini Lab. This is just for building circuits from scratch. Um, but what I've realized is that the modular synth is the perfect playground for developing circuits, like far better than any other format because you've got all of these functions. You've got all of the like complicated, unforgiving stuff is there. Somebody else has figured out how to make oscillators and filters. Then you can just make like, this is just a little kind of simple keyboard, although it, it's got a bunch of circuitry, but, or let's say like these sensors allow you to, just very simply start to inter interact with the functionality of your circuit without much work. You know, like this is a really simple circuit, but now it's kind of activated my whole system in a different way. Um, so, you know, this as a product is going to be maybe, let's say, one half hardware and one half uh, information. So, so it's some, some sort of breadboard where you can make your own patch, but what's What's underneath it? Okay, so yeah, I didn't say what it actually is. So this is, yeah, this is a breadboard where you can, this is the standard interface for prototyping circuitry that yeah. like the world has been using for a long time. So, um, and it's sort of the original modular interface in a lot of ways. Um, and what's happening here is, you know, I have just put a breadboard on a Euro rack, but it also has underneath it all the power, uh, <coughs> excuse me, all the power stuff to give you the juice to power your circuits, and then lots of protection, basically. Yeah. So the the value of this object is that it lets you go crazy without knowing what you're doing, without breaking stuff. Yeah. And that's those are the key things. I want you to go nuts. Yeah. I want you to just experiment and have fun and not break things. And but this gives you that freedom. And if I can give people that freedom to just start experimenting without the fear or the intimidation, yeah. then man, there's you can do so much, you know? Um, and it's a really exciting frontier. You know, so much of what we're doing is about looking for new things, looking for new frontiers to explore sonically or uh, control-wise. So this, to me, just seems like one of the richest terrains to dive into. Cool. Well, you also, I mean, to me, it's still a bit cryptic. Uh, I know, I know what it is, but will you make like micro modules? for it so it's easier for people to get into? Good question. <laughs> um, what I like about breadboard as an interface is it's totally scalable. So you can go from uh, this, you can go from the, the raw level, so we're at the lowest level here of components and integrated circuits, then we've got these sort of overlay circuits. Um, so this is where you can just print out, uh, you can print out this paper, put it on your breadboard, and then program these chips. So these are just AT tinies. they're 10 cents or something. And people can build these, and then you can go all the way up to this. This is a voltage controlled filter. I've got a oscillator version as well, an amplifier version. So you can have the raw blocks, uh, the raw, sorry, the raw analog blocks, then when you can make these digital blocks. So That is super cool. And yeah, and you can, you can scale it up and down. So there have been a lot of other approaches to lower level circuit development, and they're all great in different ways, but one of the things I've taken issue with is that they seem to be convinced that people can't handle lower level circuitry. Yeah. And I'm almost like, I'm determined to, to believe that people can, you know, yeah. but that you don't always have to. So you can use this, but if you want to, you can go to the lower level. And I really believe that people can, and that there's a lot of people that want to. Um, so, uh, you know, this line, I think, has the potential to expand for a really long time. But um, what a lot of what I want to provide is, you know, instructions, really specific step-by-steps of how, so this is going to be like 101 modules you can build. Um, and then it would be everything from a mixer to a filter to a, you know, all kinds of CMOS. If any of your viewers are familiar with uh, Lunetta synth, it's like a whole line of sort of synthesizer, <coughs> excuse me. If any of your viewers are familiar with CMOS, it's a whole line of uh, sort of modules based on a single chip. There's a bunch of these single math chips, basically, and you can make tons of stuff with just a chip and some resistors. Um, uh, yeah, that's super cool. Uh, you, you can even scale it up to uh, 
If you're really into it, you could prototype any any module. You could prototype any module. That's what this this piece here is kind of the scale of a module. I mean, as far as like the real estate you need for developing the circuitry. I haven't made a single module that takes more than this amount of space, unless I'm being really messy. So this idea here was, this is what a developer can use to, to make a full module. And then this rail on the top is for all the hardware. Um, and then this is for more like, I think more interfacing functions, but you can also make modules here. And then potentially this could have an, an adaptation process from here to module. But you know, these are all the things I want to sort of talk to people about here, get some feedback. I think one of the strengths of this product is I've been working on it for like five years. You know, it's, it's, it's evolved naturally in through processes that I use as a musician and synth developer. So it's not, it's not all just ideas, it's realities that have proven themselves to work. Um, and um, I should have shown this earlier, but you were asking what's underneath here. So there's no breadboard on it, but so this is this here. And then I really like this as kind of your central uh, power unit where you have all the protection and connectivity and it can go in your rack or on your desktop. And you've got all of your connections here for plugging power in, taking power out. I made a, a proprietary interface for power, which I'm not crazy about doing, but in order to keep the scale small, it seemed important so I could fit uh, connectors on the backs of these units, but uh, basically you've got this unit, everything is protected so it shuts off if the user does anything wrong. Yeah. Um, and then you can connect a bunch of these expansion uh, you know, hardware modules. Um, yeah, this, is, this is really nice. And. Um, take good care of the back side of things. It looks beautiful. <laughs> well, I, yeah, it's like the secrets, uh, the hidden secrets. Yeah. Um, but uh, I really like also the idea that to be developing dually for your rack and your bench top, because I also like this idea of encouraging your rackers to start thinking in terms of the bench top as well. And the bench top is where a lot of development happens while the rack is where a lot of performance happens. And let's move between those literally and conceptually. Yeah, it's cool. Not for everyone, you know, this is, I'm not, my goal isn't to make everyone, well, not to make anyone do anything, but I know that there's a subculture within this subculture of people who really want to get their hands dirty. Uh, I, th I think one, one thing that is really cool about this is it's not a proprietary uh, thing uh, because you, you can prototype with real components that are available. It's not like you have to buy a certain range of products from a certain manufacturer. Right, you don't need any kind of special hardware. Um, and this is what I was saying about it's proved itself over time. Like everything that you're gonna get with this, with this line are things that have proven themselves to work. And part of working is accessibility, affordability, um, compatibility. And this is one of the most compatible, flexible interfaces for circuit development that exists. Um, and, but it can be scaled to, you know, proprietary types of interfaces as well. And it can all fit, you know, it's just, it's, it's just so perfect. Um, well, looking forward to it. When do you think, when is it ready for a release? Have you set a date yet? Um, I haven't set a date. What I want to do now, um, I wanted to bring it and show people and get some feedback. And then I want to give it like six months maybe to, um, to just torture it. I want to do burn tests where you just plug the power together and leave it for a week. I want to throw them off of the rooftop and make sure they survive. So, you know, when this gets presented to the world, it needs to guarantee you that I've, I've, you're protected. You know, I've, I've covered everything. But let's say, you know, as with most things I show at Superbooth by Christmas, I want it to be in full force. Um, but, you know, the only delay for this is just simply going to be that I'm just making sure it's as strong as possible. Yeah. That's super cool. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. And also, I'm looking forward to the party mix once you get your head around. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm looking, I'm, I'm just so eager to have this done. I took a really long break after Superbooth to work on other things and travel and family and all. And that kind of took a back seat for a bit. But um, I'm just, I'm so ready to party. So... Um, uh, cool. Uh, thank you for showing me all this. Yeah, this is going to be really cool. Right? Right? right. <laughs> Thanks so much.